Apostle Dr. Faith Walters received the call from the Lord to begin a ministry that would empower individuals for success in the kingdom of God. And Lord God, we thank you for being such a great God. Lift we thank you for being a loving God, a gracious Welcome God. Welcome to Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Located in Mount Vernon, New York, and online at wamo.org. Join Apostle Dr. Faith Walters, live on Sundays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. for divine service, empowerment, worship, prayer, words of encouragement, Bible education, fellowship and more. This broadcast is a production of WAMO Media Network. Thank you for joining us. If you want to support this ministry, please subscribe, like, share this video, and leave a comment. It's easy and will cost you nothing. If you want to donate, please visit www.wamo.org forward slash give. You can watch our services via our website, live.wamoe.org, on television via Carib Vision, at caribvision.tv, and on the YouTube and Facebook apps. You are the Jesus, we exalt you Jesus, I love you Jesus. Thank you for joining us for the continuation of this episode. Please enjoy the program and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. This message that I want to share with you today has been in my spirit for quite some time. The topic, when he came to himself. I mean, it's been shaking me for quite some time and I'm like, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know uh, when I'm going to share it. But today is just impressed on me because I was asking God, I need I need a word from you. It just came to me. But when he came to himself, I'm going to be reading St. Luke 15, verses 11 to 32. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to read it first. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm going to allow the Lord to minister to me as I'm ministering to you as I break the word down. Praise the name of Jesus. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. In St. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And it reads, again, St. Luke 15, verses 11 through 32, reading from the King James Version, New King James Version. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And a younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and they wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land and began to be in want. Then when he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would get gladly have filled his, his stomach with the pods or with the food that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, hold on to that thought now, hold on to that. But when he came to himself, that's the focus, the scripture today, the message today. <clears throat> he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spear and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. When he was still a great way off. His father saw him. That compassion. And ran. And fell 
on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. This my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field. Now as he came out and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years. I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, with prostitutes, you kill the fatty calf for him. And his father said to him, son, you're always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And the word of the Lord is always blessed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. We continue to live in extreme perilous times. That lawlessness continues to overrun our lives. With many who don't even have respect for human life. Oh, Spirit of God. We just heard recently of a child who killed his mother. Because she told him no to get into some kind of some kind of uh, headphone device. Her recent the husbands shooting their wives and wives shooting their husbands. Oh, spirit of God! So much things on the rise. People just taking lives at random without even concerning themselves with the consequences. They're not worried about what is going to happen to them. Some of them do it and they take their lives. Many believe that having a gun in their home is a safety for them. But it's unfortunate that mother that was killed by her child, it was a gun that was in her lockbox. The child was smart enough to know the combination and to take that lock off that box and use that gun to deliberately kill his mother. So many children have been lost. So many things happening through child abuse, molestations. So many things are going on in our time. And, and due to the pandemic, okay, in the aftermath of it, people are still uh, worrying about the pandemic because there's some people still dying of COVID. And, and the, the aftermath of the pandemic, people 
are still, there's a rise of worry. There's a rise of fear. There's a rise of hopelessness. There's increased mental illness. People are still going through different challenges. People are, 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 are being in, in, in just been encumbered with what's happening around them. Our internet has, has been a, a source of where people go to get their fix. People put all their business on social media. Some people take people's lives on social media. Holy Spirit of God. The show Killer Robinson story continues to be in the headlines as they continue to unravel what truly happened to that young lady. So, so much things is on the rise. So much things are happening. Holy Spirit of God. So many things are going on. Children is saying, as I said in the last days, children are going to be against parents and parents against children. Holy Spirit of God. But I'm here with you with somebody today that our Lord is there waiting for you to turn to him in prayer. He has what you need. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. In St. Luke chapter 2, going back some few verses, uh, Luke 15, sorry. It, it begins with a list of parables with Jesus' responses to his critics, which are the Pharisees, the religious leaders. They didn't like the fact that Jesus hung out with sinners. That's in verse two. He often challenged them to do the same, but they didn't care because they felt that everything for them is about law, their law, what they believe, their doctrines. And if you're not following their doctrines and their laws, you're really not of God. So they always been, they, they always felt that they are better than people feel that like they're superior to the sinners, uh, the people that look, uh, don't look like them or don't dress like them or don't do things out of the ordinary because they are supposed to be the perfect ones. So they don't think that they're committing any type of sin because they're trying to follow the law. How many of us, many religions, they follow the law day in and day out. But yet they're sinning. I met some religions. They follow the law. But they're living with one another without marriage. So they're in the process of all of that. They're sinning. They think they're closed. They allow our parents. Allow them to feel holy and satimonious. It's like these Pharisees, religious leaders. And they feel that all these way you dress on the outside, they feel that because you are drinking and you are smoking and you are uh, sleeping with different type of people, you are having a bunch of babies out of wedlock, uh, uh, you are in gangs and you are, you are a tax collector. Yes. You may be a harlot, a prostitute, and uh, you, you, you are selling your bodies. And you're doing everything that's foul. You're homosexual. So they believe that because they're not, they're not doing these things, they're okay. But Jesus didn't worry about them. Okay, because he didn't concern himself the way they thought, because they did not bring Jesus here. Okay, it was not because of righteous people why Jesus came. Because if you're already righteous, what do you need to be righteous again for? Jesus came, the word of God says, Jesus came to bring sinners to repentance. Holy Spirit of God. 
So if you're in a religious mindset, you're, you're, you're stuck in, in, in laws and caught up with different things and, and, and your mind is not in tune with the Lord and you're worried about clothes and what people are wearing and, and worry about if the person got all rags, they ain't nobody. But you're the dressed up one that ain't, that ain't got no sense. You're going to be dressed up, but you're foolish. Just like these Pharisees and Sadducees. They just really want to always challenge Jesus. And try to trip him up every chance they get. But I like the fact when Jesus tells his parables. Rest the name of Jesus. Jesus' message is to always rise to the occasion of saving the lost. That's what he's about. Saving that one, saving that lost person out there. That's one out, that one out there that got away. You heard part of, if you read, get a chance to read uh, uh, at, at Luke 15, talk about the lost sheep. You got a hundred sheep, one got lost. You go, you leave the 99 there. No, look for the one that was lost and bring them back. Hallelujah. And you, you rejoice because you found that one sheep that came back. Then you have a parable of the lost coin. The, the woman had 10 coins. She lost one. Okay, and she swept her house in them times of a dirt on the, on, on the ground. In the houses, some of these houses had dirt. She turned on the lamp and went to look for that, that, that lost coin. And when she found it, she was excited. She rejoiced. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So it, it's telling you that uh, uh, once whatever is lost, you know, if you if you are if you are not living for Christ, you're lost out there. Jesus can bring you back to Himself. Praise the name of Jesus. I love the fact that Jesus spoke using parables. So as to get you to think for yourself, where well, you may have erred in your belief system. Also to look into yourself, examine yourself to see where change can come forth. In addition to offer compassion and empathy to others in a place where you may have never thought about it. Holy Spirit of God. And, and, and I did some research about 46 parables Jesus utilized in scripture when he was walking this earth. This is his strong message of hope through his, through his birth, his inc incarnation, which is God became man. His death and resurrection changed eternity. Conquering death and securing a path to salvation. Jesus' short public ministry, his words transformed humanity, challenged conventional wisdom, demonstrated servant leadership, and calling on those who follow him to demonstrate a radical love to build the kingdom of God here on earth, to appear a people, to appear the people, to be ready for his return. His parables were memorable messages to teach us valuable lessons. I'm just so grateful to God for using these uh, uh, parables to share. Let us think, because it, it's important every time I read them, I, I start to think, I start making connections. It does something to your spirit, you know? And, and, and we look in uh, Luke 15, verse 11 to 35. It speaks of a prodigal son. And prodigal means spending money or resources, okay, very recklessly, recklessly. Be wastefully extravagant. Also means living beyond your means. I kind of make that kind of personal. Trying to appease your wants, not your needs. They were becoming 
impatient and not waiting for your time to come. Holy Spirit of God. So I'm going to go into the scripture. I'm going to break it down. So this man had two sons. The younger of them say, you know what? I'm grown now. So guess what? I'm going to go to my daddy and ask him for what's mine. I'm going to ask him for something that I didn't work for. But because I'm his son, I'm entitled. So just like when you are you you have an inheritance, so uh, your parents may leave some funds behind or something that's laid up for you when they pass. But this son here, he didn't want to wait. Okay? So he decided to say, he said, Father, give me what's due me. Imagine that. He ain't work for it. But he's saying, Father, give me what's due me. Okay, what you got for me, I want it now. I'm not going to wait till you die. I want it now. Okay, because I feel I'm a man now. I feel that I can handle this. So give me what you got for me and I'm going to take it and go about my business. So the father, he ain't worried about it. Okay. All right. He divided them or on it. He, he, so he divided to them his livelihood. And many days after, soon after, the young man got up everything he got, stuff that he ain't paid for because it is in his parents' house, in his father's house, pack up stuff that he ain't buy. Okay. You ever think about some time when your, your children want to leave your house? You tell them to leave, they're going to leave the clothes. You're going to allow them to leave the clothes on their back. Okay. Whatever else is there is, is what I paid for. So you go on about your business. Okay. But he was allowed to take the stuff he, 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 he had accumulated while he was at home, packed his stuff. All right. He journeyed to a far country. So let's say I live in New York and he traveled to, uh, 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 um, let's say he went to um, Africa, parts of Africa, okay, or Indonesia or someplace, traveled to a far place, went to India, somewhere. Okay, he don't know, he don't know this country, he never researched it, doesn't understand it, he just say, I'm going to get up and go, all right? So he gets up and he goes and... He's there and he's, he's I guess he thought he went, end up in a bar or some kind of little town or whatever. And, you know, and I guess he got with uh, women. All right. Yeah. Because you out there, some women going to be with you because they want to take some of your money. So he got with the women, probably did a little gambling. Okay. Did a little something, something to the point where. All that he had, all that his father gave them was wasted. Let's say within a week or maybe in a month by the time he got there. So he wasted it with prodigal living, wasteful, extravagant, doing, just paying for stuff and probably give it, sitting at the bar, giving out free drinks because he got all this money because he didn't earn it. So he don't know the value of it. Help me, Holy Ghost. He don't, he don't understand. I'm going to keep it practical. I'm going to balance it out. He, he, he spending money that he never worked for. So he didn't understand the value uh, uh, of, of what, of the funds that he had. His father was so, so wonderful to give him all this money of him. Just go and spend it. And he, he wasted it. He did everything he could. Spend it on everything he could think of. And you know, after a while, you don't spend it on things that you ain't get. You ain't got no job, okay? To keep some of the money in your pocket. Because if he had got a job, he would have kept that money in his pocket, okay? And he wouldn't spend it so much. But you see, he didn't understand the value of work, okay? Because he wouldn't ask his father because he was he was the son of the father. So whatever he knew, his father had put stuff aside in case of his death, okay? But he wanted it now. So he didn't understand what it is, the value of working hard. Holy Spirit of God. So he went, 
Okay. When he spent it all, he, there, there arose a serious famine in that land where he went. Okay. So drought, a dryness came forth. He wasn't expecting that to happen because he just went out there on his own in his own thought patterns. He didn't take Jesus with him. He, he ain't worried about all of that because he wanted to do his thing. Think about it. Think about it. You have, you have your children, you raise them. And the Lord, you taught them the word of God and, 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 and you, you uh, give them uh, the love and the attention that they required. And you pray with them and encourage them and they grew up and then they go their separate ways. Not remembering where they come from. Follow me now. So he's in this land and the land got some drought. And he began to be in want. Your children travel far away. They, they're in doing their thing. You ain't worried about a care in the world because the little money that you gave them, they enjoying themselves. But then it wasn't expecting something going to happen. Wasn't expecting that because they figure, you know, a lot of young people figure they, they live on edge. They, they live as if they're invincible. Ain't nothing going to happen. Okay. So as he was, he was in this land and, and a severe, severe famine tells me that it was serious business, that everything dried up. <clears throat> Holy Spirit of God. Ain't nothing much left. Every, everywhere they turned, there was not really much. Okay. And he just lost everything. Okay. And he began to be in want. Began to be in need. He started thinking now. Okay. Then he went and joined himself because, you know, I got to find a way to survive because I ain't trying to go back home to let him know I failed. No, I ain't trying to do that right now because I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm the man. Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I got this. I got this. Okay. Then he joined himself to a, a, a person that owned a, a field. Okay. He had a, a pig farm, a horse farm, uh, not horse farm, a, 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 a hog farm. I call it hog or pig or, you know, sow or, you know, a pork pork farm farm okay and uh so he was uh give him a job send him into the fields to feed the swine feed the pigs now he hungry now he's feeding these pigs okay he is so hungry and he said he would gladly have filled his stomach with the food that the swine ate and no one gave him anything look at that he's up there feeding the pigs and then his, his stomach is growling. And anybody giving him nothing. He ain't getting paid. He's doing this. He's hungry. He's starving. His, his stomach is roaring. Okay? And he's just sitting there looking at the, 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 the pigs. And, you know, he said, you know, I, I, I'm a, I fill my stomach with this food because I'm hungry. You no, know, you're hungry. You're out there in, in uh, say, for instance, you're out in, the, in a place where there's not much uh, civilization for a while. You out there with just the berries or in a bush somewhere. It's, it's you're far away from people, and sometimes you see it. All you can see there's insects and and leaves, or you don't know what kind of leaves some of these things are. But you're hungry, and you ain't. You see, index. You normally don't eat no insects, but you're out there. OK, I, I, I've seen movies. I never really been in army, but I've seen movies where uh, uh, um, in people in the in the armed services, they're out there somewhere and uh, they're in the bush. They're there for a long time and they're battling the enemy. And after a while, just not to stave off uh, starvation, they they eat certain elements of the land. So here it is, just this uh young man he started eating some of what was there what the the swine was eating okay because nobody was giving him more food okay but here's the part which is the bulk of my message but when he came to himself say that with me 
But when he came to himself, put it in the chat somewhere. But when he came to himself, yes, he got tired. He began to remember of where he came from. He began to think about uh, what he was raised on. He began to think about, you know what? I don't need to be living like this. Holy Spirit of God. I, 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 I came from a home of wealth. I, I came from a home uh, of where there's so much. Day. I don't have to, to live around these swines. I don't have to work. Uh, 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 you know, to gain my living, Holy Spirit of God. I uh, bless you, Eve Worship Connect. Uh, Holy Spirit of God. Yes, hallelujah. I don't have to, to take this, Holy Spirit of God, because my daddy, hallelujah, he's got so much. He got a castle over a thousand hills, hallelujah. So I ain't got to worry about this. I ain't got to take this slop. I ain't got to live like this, Holy Spirit of God. So you know what I'm going to do, Holy Spirit of God. I am going to change my mindset, hallelujah. See, when you come to yourself, hallelujah, when you start thinking back, hallelujah, from the prayers that your grandmother prayed prayers hallelujah that your mother prayed holy spirit of god hallelujah then prayers make you come to yourself let you realize that no matter how far you go you got to come back hallelujah hallelujah because once them prayers are on you holy spirit of god you got to turn it around so it doesn't matter how far you go from the lord doesn't matter how far you go from what you've been taught Holy Spirit of God, you got to come to yourself one day. Holy Spirit of God. So when he came to himself, he said, he started thinking, you know what? I'm not worthy, Holy Spirit of God, to be the son to my father now. And he's thinking about, yes, those servants, they are working for their father, Holy Spirit of God, and they're living a good life, Holy Spirit of God. They got a roof of their head. They got food to eat. Their family's been been fed, Holy Spirit of God, but yet I'm here, I'm an heir, Holy Spirit of God, and here I am sitting around swines, Holy Spirit of God, I ain't got to do this, oh hallelujah, but guess what, he said, I don't want to perish here with hunger, I ain't got to sit here starving to death, Holy Spirit of God, he said, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned, hallelujah, against heaven and before you. He decided to humble himself, Holy Spirit of God. He 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 said, "I'm I'm gonna be put put myself out of the out of the equation now. I'm going to allow the right thing. I'm gonna allow the prayers that went up for me, hallelujah. It's gonna float through me now, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like." one of your, your hired servants. So he's rehearsing this, what he's going to say to his father. Oh, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's saying that I'm going to say this to my dad. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So so, so you realize that that either you may think you got it together. You may, you're not, you're not invincible. Things can happen to you. Holy Spirit of God. But when you come to your senses, hallelujah. And you understand, I don't need to live like this. What am I doing here? What is happening to me? Why am I sitting in this situation? Why am I sitting on this bed in this in this prostitution state? Why am I waiting for a job to come in a room? Why am I doing poles, dancing on poles, and have men putting put, putting putting uh, monies in my underwear as I dance half naked on the stage? Holy Spirit of God, why am I doing this? Why am I acting like uh, this is the way out for me? And uh, when I got a child at home, uh, uh, somebody take care of that child. Why am I living like this? Uh, why am I selling my body? Holy Spirit of God, why am I sitting here on drugs? Uh, 
Holy Spirit of God. Why am I, uh, hallelujah, in this gang situation? Holy Spirit of God. Why am I letting this, this leader who's broken, uh, Holy Spirit of God, to tell me to go out and murder somebody? Oh, Spirit of God. Why am I sitting here? Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, drinking alcohol, drowning my sorrow. Holy Spirit of God. Uh, let me pick up myself. Uh, let me brush off myself. Uh, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, and go knock on the door of my family members who done put me out to pasture because they couldn't do anything else more for me. Holy Spirit of God. Uh, they did all they could, uh, but I wasn't listening to them. Uh, Holy Holy Spirit of God. Then even to a point where they had to shut the door against me. They had enough for Holy Spirit of God. But there come one day when I came to my senses. I came to myself and I said I need to change this. I need to do something different. So here he's thinking to himself what he gonna say to his father. Holy Spirit of God. When you come to yourself hallelujah. Humbleness. Humility is gonna take you over Holy Spirit of God, you're going to decrease, uh, hallelujah, and allow the Lord to increase in your life, uh, Holy Spirit of God. And I love the Father. He didn't sit up there and, and argue with his son and say, okay, son, you you got this, okay? You do what you got to do. You can understand what life is all about, uh, Holy Spirit of God. And I'm sure the father was praying for him. I know the father was hurt uh, because his son just came to him and say, I'm leaving, uh, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, but when he came to himself, uh, that's the key. Uh, hallelujah. The key is uh, when you're going out there doing all your right, your riotous living, uh, doing all kind of shameful stuff. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. There come a time in your life that God is calling you. God is calling you out of your mess. Holy Spirit of God. You got to say, oh, I've done enough now. I can't do this no more. Holy Spirit of God. God is tugging at Oh, hallelujah. Tugging at your clothes. Tugging at your mind. Tugging at your spirit, uh, tugging at your body, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, he's telling you right now, uh, he's telling you to come home, uh, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, so here it is. Uh, he realized uh, that he needed his life to change. Uh, he realized uh, that this can't continue to happen, uh, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, this can't continue to be like this. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't keep living uh, in this type of situation. Uh, Holy Spirit of God, I got to make a, a change. I got to create a shift somewhere. There got to be a shift in my life. Holy Spirit of God. And he said he rehearsed himself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back home and say to my daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for telling you, for me thinking that I got it together. And the money that you gave me, whatever you gave me I wasted it Holy Spirit of God but I'm thankful hallelujah that he came to himself I'm thankful that he realized he needed something different in his life Holy Spirit of God he realized that hey I can't keep moving around in circles Holy Spirit of God you can't go in from A to B back to A go to B and ain't going no further. Holy Spirit of God, there come a time in your life where you got to stop and think. Holy Spirit of God, I can't live like this. I can't go on like this. I can't be battling, going around the mulberry bush as a song they used to sing. Hallelujah. I can't go keep going around the tree. Holy Spirit of God, keep coming back to the same crossroad. Hallelujah. I got to change my life. Life. I got to change my direction. Holy Spirit of God. So sometimes a light comes on in your head. Hallelujah. When you come to yourself, a light bulb come on in your head and let you realize it ain't this type of life for me. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. 
Oh, Spirit of God. So he made his way. Hallelujah. He rose. He made his way to his father. But when the father saw him a little way off, hallelujah, I guess the father was standing outside. I guess something in his spirit, something, I'm just going on. Hallelujah. Something in his spirit. Say something different is going to happen today. Holy Spirit of God. I believe the Spirit of God was talking at the Father. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So he must have made his way outside. Hallelujah. Waiting. He didn't know what he was waiting for, but he went outside. Holy Spirit of God. And when he looked, hallelujah, I still a way off. He was out there in the distance, Holy Spirit of God, his father saw him, hallelujah, oh, bless the name of Jesus, can you imagine, Holy Spirit of God, when you're coming back to Jesus, yes, he sees you a way off, hallelujah, and he gonna run out to meet you, hallelujah, hallelujah, and when the father saw him, he had compassion, he was sitting Sympathetic, hallelujah, to his son. And he ran and fell oh, on his neck. And I'm believing that the son knelt on his knees, Holy Spirit of God, in a, in a form of surrendering, hallelujah. Because I was wondering how did he fall on his neck, Holy Spirit of God. Then I realized that his son was kneeling down, Holy Spirit of God, and he fell on his neck and he kissed him, Holy Spirit of God. He kissed his son. He was so happy, hallelujah, that his son came home. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, wherever you are right now, uh, put in the chat. Uh, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a praise right now. Uh, give God a praise right now. Uh, give God a praise right now. Uh, Sister Christina Atkins, uh, give God. Hallelujah. You said praise the Lord. Uh, say hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, put it in the chat right now. Uh, say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is able. Oh, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the son said to his father, oh, he said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Oh, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came with a repentant heart, a repentant spirit. Oh, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thanks for watching. Please join us next time for the continuation of this episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us today. We invite you to come back again and join Apostle Faith Live on Sundays at 2 p.m. for Bible education and church services, and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. for Feature Wednesdays, where we share messages from other kingdom leaders from within the WAMO network. Are you a kingdom leader with a message of hope and inspiration for the children of God? Send us an email with your message to support at wamo.org or join the Wamo Media Network via our website, wamo.org forward slash network. Are you in need of prayer? Email prayer requests to support at wamo.org or join our prayer line, Monday mornings at 7 a.m. Lord God, we thank you for being such a great God. We thank you for being a loving God, a gracious God. If you need help to overcome low self-worth, heal your marriage, restoration through therapy for children, teens, individuals, and couples, book an appointment for therapy with Dr. Faith at our website, wamo.org forward slash counseling. You may also access self-help resources at our website, wamo.org forward slash resources. If you would like to become a member, volunteer, or partner with WAMO Outreach Ministries, send your email to support at wamo.org. Come as you are. Why you should join this ministry. 1. To empower people for success in the Kingdom of God through Bible education. 2. 
to provide support services for the upliftment and development of your community. 3. To empower children and youth to increase their knowledge and earning potential by advancing their skills and professional capacity. 4. To provide solutions for families who need shelter, a place for worship, skills development, and access growth opportunities for community leaders. And 5. To provide support and a source of hope for senior citizens, ex-convicts, and people in need. It's easy to support this ministry, here is how you can help. Through tax-deductible giving, easily accessible everywhere via our website, at wamo.org forward slash give. You can give a one-time or monthly donation, or contribute funding to one of our programs. Become a member of our community or volunteer team, apply at our website, at wamo.org forward slash membership. Become a member of our network, and let us work together, to build and grow a strong, healthy community of Kingdom Advocates, empowering people for success in the Kingdom of God. Sign up at our website, wamo.org forward slash network. Other ways to join us and support the ministry. Subscribe on YouTube at Wamo Ministries, Apostle Faith Live. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Wamo Ministries. Contact us anytime at Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. P.O. Box 2077 Mount Vernon, New York 10551. Telephone 914-699-2482 and email support at Wamo w-a-m-o-e dot org your support and generosity will positively change lives i have the the first books poems about my self-esteem that's uh it's on the website it's on there for twelve dollars and it's help you if you have problems with low self-esteem. This book will certainly help you and touch you and make your life change. Okay, so yeah, I have one here that says, what is a smile? A smile lights up your day. It makes your face bright. It sends sunshine when there is pain. So, ah, always keep a smile even when you're having a bad day. Smile a little. It makes the world go around. So, even as you are going through, yes, girl, I was still smiling and going on same way. All right. When I'm in pain. Yes, yes, yes. So this is a powerful uh, book. The, 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 the poetry is very uh, short and to the point. But even though they're short, they're deep. So you got to take some time to really think about them and, and just get them in your spirit and let, let it get deep down in you. And for you to really understand, you know, what it's trying to say to you. All right. And I have my my new book that that came out uh, in July and the book is Reborn. And, and this book is, is just talking about the personal story about my journey from a place of despair, my place of darkness to fulfilling God's purpose in my life. This book is also transform your life as well. It will make your life different. It, 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 it shares uh, a, a, some, a, not even a, all of it, just some uh, a synopsis of some of the things I experienced while growing up in the church and growing up in, in a family, you know, that I thought loved me and didn't realize uh, that I, I had to do it by myself, but because of God, he helped me to get through it to bring me to a place of where I am today. So I am just book is to encourage you that if you are in a place of darkness and you are, are surrounded by people who are supposed to love you and they don't show you, demonstrate that love, know that God is there for you. And take some time to pen your thoughts because you never know who's going to pick up your book one day. When you're gone from this, when it time has come, you're gone from this world. You're leaving legacies. These are things you're leaving behind for, for your loved ones to read. And you never know who will pick it up wherever they are. And we have the, the, the supernatural highway now that's everywhere, you know. So, you know, you'd be surprised where people find words that can help them.